All right. Good afternoon, everybody. It's two o'clock on a Wednesday, which means it must be time for Webinar Wednesday. I'm your host, Greg Epps, and today we've got another fantastic webinar for you. Uh, we are going to be covering uh, the ins and outs, uh, a top tier overview of Transaction Desk. Now, uh, as I've mentioned the past few weeks, what we're going to be doing uh, as we go through uh, from now up until the fall is we're going to uh, uh, start out doing top tiers, uh, uh, overviews of the biggest uh, systems that we have, and then we're going to drill down to uh, view a little more information about all of them. Now, uh, just as an example, uh, I have have a little flyer that we've got up here. Um, uh, we can make sure that that's been emailed out if there are any of you that haven't seen it. Now, this is just showing you everything that's going to be coming up in uh uh, July. So as you can see, uh, we're going to be covering transaction desk this week. We'll walk through Sierra's tax suite or the MLS tax suite next week. Then we're going to uh, dip into Paragon just for those of you that were all in the Paragon overview. Uh, so you're aware we're going to uh, actually do that focus that I talked about where one day we'll focus on searching in Paragon. Then we'll move into listings and then into CMAs. Uh, and then when we're done with that, we're going to do the exact same thing for transaction desk. So I bring that up just because what we're going to be covering today is going to be top tier. Um, so if you want a little more information about it, I'm going to make sure before the end of the class that we're all aware of all of the options that we have to view uh, supplemental training information and videos pertaining to uh, uh, how to get from point A to point B within transaction desk. So just wanted to touch base and point that out because I know a lot of people have a lot of questions um, and uh, we are going to be able to answer all of them. Uh, just realize today isn't going to be like a full three hour CE class for transaction desk. We're just going to be uh, uh, basically covering uh, the, the top tier stuff so we all know uh, what's going on or so we're all aware, especially for our newer agents, what all transaction desks can do for you. Uh, per usual, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free. Uh, you can, <laughs> I guess everyone's uh, you guys do know that I can see all of your names on the uh, on the, the far right hand side, so you don't have to send me a message saying that you're here. But I love that you guys are doing it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can go ahead and drop me a line right in that little chat section here. I'm going to try not to get bogged down into anything in particular. So if you've got a very uh, in depth question, also remember that my email address is greg at gamls dot com. And as some of you are aware, if you sent me an email last week looking for that webinar or with a question, I went ahead and answered those for you. So if you send me that email, I will make sure uh, that I, uh, or if you send me an email, I will make sure that I get back in touch with you, whether it's with a phone call or just a simple email answering the question that you have. Now, with all of the pleasantries out of the way, like I mentioned at the start of this, uh, today we're going to be focusing on Transaction Desk. Now, uh, for those of you that, that don't know Transaction Desk, or as it's now called Transactions, the Transaction Desk Edition, uh, which makes so much sense to me. Um, I'm kidding. Um, uh, as I was saying before, uh, Transaction Desk, which is now called the Transactions Transaction Desk Edition, uh, is actually uh, going to be our, um, our our transaction database. This is where you're going to be able to go uh, to uh, create your uh, digital transactions, to do your digital signatures, uh, and to essentially have a digital version of that filing cabinet that you normally keep. Um, <laughs> okay, Rochelle, thanks. Um, that you would normally keep uh, instead of having a physical copy, you're going to be able to do it all digitally. So uh, the idea and or the tagline for uh, Transaction Desk is to allow for you to go from contract to con or contact to contract to closing all without having to use any paper. Um, and the way the system works, it's a uh, it pulls in or allows for you to pull in listing information directly from Paragon. Uh, along with that, if you are a member of GAR, it allows for you to pull in all of your GAR forms, and it gives you and provides you with unlimited access to uh, digital signatures. Uh, now, the three big things that we try to cover here whenever we uh, walk through Transaction Desk. So I'm going to touch on those today, and as I mentioned before, uh, we're going to do a continuing webinar, or when we continue on in our webinars with Transaction Desk. We will draw, uh, delve down into each one. So we'll have a specific webinar covering exactly how to create a transaction. Along with that, uh, we'll, we'll also show you how to work with signings and forms. So uh, as we, as you can see right now, we are on the main screen for Transaction Desk. Now, Transaction Desk, much like Paragon, is a very open-ended uh, system that does allow for you to go in and um, 
Well, basically uh, format the system so that it meets your needs, uh, meaning there are lots of different ways that you can get from point A to point B. Uh, uh, one instance of the customization that's uh, at your disposal uh, at your disposal and available for you uh, is on this dashboard that we have here. Now, if you notice, uh, there are uh, static areas. I have the ability to start a digital signature uh, underneath AuthentiSign. I can create my own transaction by clicking on transactions. Uh, if I would like to view any transactions that I've already created, as you can see, I've got a little window here uh, that allows me to uh, scroll through and click on all of my transactions. Likewise, if I have any digital signatures uh, that I want to work with or look into, I have all of the ones that are active right now at my disposal directly from the screen. Uh, if I would like to customize this uh, when I go in, because some of you may have noticed when you logged into the system uh, that your um, excuse me, some of you may notice when you logged into the system uh, that your dashboard looks a little different than mine. Uh, the reason for that is going to be uh, that we can go through here and uh, we've got this little padlock. Now, if you notice at the top of the screen, we've got three icons. One is going to be a how do I, which is a quick way for you to view videos that will pertain to the particular page that you're on uh, within um, uh, uh, Transaction Desk. We also have switch to broker view. Now, this is only gonna be available to you if you are a broker. As an employee of the MLS, uh, I, I can uh, impersonate and swap out things. That's why that's gonna show up there. But finally, we have a little padlock that allows for me to lock and unlock that dashboard. Now, if I go ahead and I click on that little padlock, it's going to unlock it and notice the screen changes. Well, now not only do I have the ability to look at my AuthentiSign, my transactions and the ones that I already have currently created, but there's a whole host of icons at the top of my screen that I can use to drag down no, you do not, Erica. Uh, just so you're aware, everything that we're going to be covering on Webinar Wednesday uh, or on Wednesdays as we cover uh, do these webinars, these are all going to be uh, uh, demos and walkthroughs of how to use the products and services that come free with your membership with Georgia MLS. Should we ever come across a product or service that requires a supplemental payment or a subscription fee, do not worry. Uh, for those of you that have been listening to my voice and following these webinars uh, for the past few years, trust me, I will let you know ahead of time. Uh, this one is free with your membership. So if you guys were able to log on to the system uh, directly from the homepage, if you were able to log into georgiamls.com, then you've already got access to everything that we're going to be covering today. Uh, really, the only thing that uh, you may not have access to is going to be the GAR forms, uh, just because, and we'll cover that in a second once I go towards the digital signature side of things. Uh, uh, in order for uh, you to get access to GAR, you either need to belong to a board or association uh, within the state of Georgia, or uh, you would pay GAR for uh, access to those licenses on a yearly basis. But generally speaking, Erica, you are good to go. Uh, if you are a member of Georgia MLS, you are able to gain access to Transaction Desk. Um, now, where we left off is we were looking at that dashboard, and I was just pointing out uh, that there are several different options that you have uh, located at the top of the screen here on the scroll bar uh, that will allow for you to customize how that dashboard works. Now, as an employee of Georgia MLS, as someone who teaches the class, I mean, I mainly deal with digital signatures and the creation of transactions. But for all of you, as you're getting uh, uh, started, uh, as I just noticed this icon here, there is actually a getting started widget that you can click on that will walk you through some help desk stuff uh, just to get you started with the system. Along with that, uh, it is worth noting, if you notice as I go through here, we've got a series of blue icons and a series of green icons. And if I close out all of these, they can start filling back up at the top uh, so we can just drag those back down. Now, the main difference between the two and how these are gonna work is I've cleared everything off of my dashboard here, but let's say I wanna go ahead and I wanna be able to create a transaction. Well, to create a transaction, I'm gonna go over here to the blue house and I'm gonna drag and drop that down and that's how we get the create transaction screen. Likewise, if I go over to that same house icon, but click on the green one and drag it down, that's going to allow for me to view all of my transactions. So as a rule of thumb, as you go through the system here, uh, when you click on the blue icons, those are for creation. So if you would like to create a transaction or if you'd like to create a transaction template, which I can describe here in a second, or even if you want to create a digital signature, all you have to do is drag those down into your workspace. You can move them to wherever you want. And then once I uh, lock down that padlock, anytime I want to create something, I can just click on one of those blue icons. Likewise, if I want to review the things that I've already created in the system, uh, in this case, we have transactions, or if I want to look at some of our uh, signatures here, I can drag the green icons down. And the green icons are going to allow for me to review. So blue icons are for creation, green icons are for reviewing. OK, uh, just wanted to point that out uh, because I know that's usually a big question that we get is what's the difference between the two? Um, 
Clicking on those, once you've set this up the way that you want, and keep in mind, you can adjust the size, you can move things around here. All you have to do is click on that padlock again, and you've sufficiently customized and set up your transaction desk dashboard. Now, once you've done that, uh, the, the, the workflow for almost all, every other aspect of the system is going to be very similar. So, uh, like I mentioned, there are three big things that, we can, that we're going to focus on, uh, especially if we're going to be doing a top-tier overview of the system. Uh, the first of which is going to be a transaction. Now, a transaction within Transaction Desk, like I mentioned before, is a digital version of that manila folder that you have that includes all of the things that you need to get from point A to point B to closing out a uh, um, uh, to selling a property. So uh, this is going to include any uh, uh, GAR forms or RE forms that you may use if you have any office-specific documents. This is also going to pull in all of your, um, your contacts and the people that are going to be associated and affiliated with this transaction. Um, all of that information, which you would normally have written out and put into that folder that sits in that filing cabinet can be used and created digitally uh, through the system. Now, a lot of you that are, uh, are members of our service, but maybe uh, belong to certain offices, but are also dual members of other MLSs, uh, you've probably used or worked with something that's very similar to this. Uh, there are several companies that have uh, products that are, are, while not identical in, um, in, in look, have a very similar workflow to how Transaction Desk works. So, you know, your dot loops, uh, your, your uh, R docs, things like that, um, they're, they're gonna serve a similar purpose. So uh, just keep that in mind as we go through this, because it's not like we're reinventing the wheel. This is just Georgia MLS's version of a product that you may be familiar with. If you have specialized forms, that firm, can we add them? Yes, Giselle, um, not only do you have the ability to pull in forms uh, that are gonna be provided to you by either GAR or something along the lines of the RE forms that are a joint effort between Georgia MLS and FMLS, but if you have all the specific documents, you can pull those in as well. This is a very user-friendly, open-ended uh, uh, system that allows for you to pull in things when you need them, how you need them. Okay. Um, now, just to give you an idea in regards to the transactions, uh, to go about uh, creating a transaction, there are multiple ways that you could access that information. Generally speaking, you could simply click on the add button located at the top of the screen and fill out all of the information pertaining to the listing that you want to enter in as a transaction uh, to create it. Likewise, if you are in, let's say, Paragon, Hope everyone's having a good day and getting ready for a fantastic July 4th, he says as he tries to stall while his computer slowly loads. <laughs> of course, you're going to do that. All right. So um, I'll come back to that at a later date. But basically, all I wanted to point out is anytime you pull up a listing in Paragon, when you look at that results grid, each result or listing that you're going to see, um, hey, Maggie. Uh, I also noticed Mommers in there as well. We've got some Georgia MLS All-Stars, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, keep that in mind if you've got any questions. Um, where was I? Yes. So as we're going through, um, uh, if you pull up a listing in transaction or in Paragon, you're able to click on that listing. There will be a transaction desk icon because there is some interconnectivity between transaction desk and Paragon. So if I'm looking at a listing in Paragon, I can simply click on the transaction icon located next to that listing and it will create or get me started on the creation of a transaction within Transaction Desk. So, like I said, when we go over the webinar of covering how to create that transaction, uh, we'll walk through everything, but I wanna show you all the things that you can uh, in, um, add to and incorporate into your transactions when you create them. So, uh, right here, we're on the screen that has a list of all of my transactions that I've created, whether they've been through webinars or other classes. I can click into any of these and it's gonna pull up a whole host of information for me. Um, just like on the main screen, we will have a little dashboard that will pull up information pertaining to uh, that particular listing. But if you notice out on the right hand side, underneath the word that says wizard, we've got a whole list of things that are gonna be associated with all of the, with any transaction that you create. Uh, first and foremost, we've got our details information. This is going to provide you with all of the information that's uh, associated with the listing that you've pulled in from the MLS. If you notice right now, we're looking at a listing that's 1373 Chloe Drive in Lawrenceville. Uh, as I scroll down here, all of the information that's associated with this transaction, I was actually able to pull in by simply clicking on that listing. And let me show you how I did that here within Paragon. So if I go, let's find our list number. When I pull up my listing, I go down and as I mentioned before, we're gonna be a, a host of icons that are gonna be associated with that listing. By simply clicking on the link that says Transaction Desk, it's gonna open up Transaction Desk. And I know I have it open, but it's gonna open it up again. 
Um, and it's going to take me to the transaction creation screen and allow for me to get started on creating that transaction. As you can see, proofs in the pudding, all while uh, I, I just went ahead and clicked on that one button. So since I already had that transaction open, this is a good thing to see here. It actually opened up the transaction that I already created for it. So if I had opened up a different listing uh, that I didn't have a transaction for, it would allow for me to go ahead and create that transaction. Um, and all of that's put in place because there's a general rule of thumb when it comes to transaction desk. And that is you do a little bit of work on the front end so you don't have to worry about dealing with it later on on the back end. Um, and that's part of the reason why by clicking on that link, it automatically pulls in all of that listing information from the MLS along with pulling in the list information. It will pull in any contact information that is associated with that listing along with my information as the person who's working on the transaction. The next up is uh, forms. This is where you're going to be able to pull in all of your GAR forms or your RE forms. Now, as an employee of Georgia MLS, even though I have a nerds number, I don't have an active license, so I don't have access to those GAR forms. But you all, if you belong to a local association or board and you're affiliated with the Georgia Association of Realtors, you will gain access to the GAR forms, which means instead of having these RE1 and various uh, RE forms associated with the transaction, those would be replaced, if they were you, by the standardized GAR forms that are rolled out every single year. Um, now, along with being able to deal with forms, there's a section here that allows for me to view any digital signatures. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the digital signatures, if you have any signatures or digital signatures associated with this particular transaction, they will show up under the signing section. Below that, we've got documents. Now, I believe it was Giselle earlier on that asked if there was a way for you to pull in uh, any specialized forms that may not be GAR forms. The document section is where you're going to be able to pull that in. So if you have uh, any special documentation that uh, the, maybe your broker prefers that you guys use a particular form that they've created in-house, uh, along with being able to pull in all of the GAR forms, you will also be able to pull in any office specific documents. It's also worth noting that those documents that are pulled in can also be pulled into a digital signature. You're not just limited to those GAR forms to be able to do a signing. Uh, along with being able to pull in documents and forms into the transaction, you also have the ability to create a checklist. Uh, this is going to be an itemized task list for you to use that'll be uh, uh, that'll give you step-by-step -step guidelines on how to complete a transaction. Uh, a lot of times, uh, this is uh, reserved for newer agents or brokers who are getting started with a lot of new agents and they want to make sure that, that uh, their agents are able to uh, complete uh, their transactions the way that the office wants it to be com completed. Nine times out of ten, uh, most of you that are on this call already have some sort of checklist or to-do list or some guidelines that will uh, walk you through the creation process of a transaction. So in that case, on an office-to-office -to -office basis, I would just recommend sticking with what your broker wants you to do. But just be aware, uh, especially if you are a broker in this uh, webinar, you will have the opportunity to create that checklist, uh, to create a checklist for your newer agents. Uh, along with the checklist, we, are t we have tasks. Uh, as I mentioned, or the way I look at it is you have your checklist of uh, your to-do list of things, your tasks are the things within that checklist to do. Um, oh, no worries, Christy. Uh, like I said, uh, well, just to reiterate, we do have a YouTube page. If you type in Georgia MLS into the, the search screen, it'll take you to our uh, our, 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 our our web page where uh, we house all of these um, uh, webinars. As they're uh, recorded, I edit them down to try and cut out all the questions and all of my ums and ahs, which I do a horrible job at, but I try. <laughs> and then I upload them into YouTube for you guys. All right, um, now along with the checklists and tasks, uh, we do have some lesser known or lesser used items like call logs, uh, if you have any service orders, which you used to be able to do through Transaction Desk, uh, that would show up there, but you guys don't have to worry about those. Uh, the one that I do want to uh, mention before we move on right here is this history section. When you go in and you create the uh, transaction, which is a, a fairly straightforward uh, process, uh, anytime you do anything to the transaction, create it, add a document, add a name, add a contact, it's going to timestamp and date that information. Now, as an example, this transaction that I created, I just did uh, for a previous webinar. But as you can see, as I scroll through, every step that I took to the creation of that transaction is timestamped and dated and listed out here under history. So you're never going to be at a point where uh, you say you sent something out to someone and they say they never, uh, it wasn't ever sent out. The system is going to acknowledge when the signing was created, if it was opened by a participant. Uh, all of that information is going to be here just as a added form of uh, safety and security for you guys. Um, 
Um, so if we want to create a transaction, I'm gonna, I showed you all the things that you can add a transaction, but let's say you want to get started on creating one. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, and just to point out, uh, every screen that we're going to be going through for the big three today are going to look similar to this. Uh, there's a little redundancy in the layouts of these pages, not for lack of creativity, but just make it uh, a little easier for you guys to navigate. So you'll always have whatever section you're in. It's going to tell you right here. Next to that, there's going to be a search box where you can enter in information to find uh, whatever it is you're looking for, whether it's a transaction or a digital signature. Keep in mind, in either instance, uh, you have the ability to sort um, with this filter button. Uh, you can uh, view uh, um, uh, transactions that maybe you have listed as active or closed. You do have the way uh, uh, a way of sorting through um, or sifting and, and, and itemizing your uh, transactions into what status they have. Along with that, you can sort by name, transaction type, when it was created, when it was last modified, uh, closing date, listing date, and listing expiration date. The system itself is always going to default to last modified. So anytime you log in, if you leave it at last modified, the last uh, transaction that you worked on is always going to be the one that rises to the top. Um, along with that, uh, there's also an add button. If we want to create a transaction, all we have to do is click on that add button. Notice uh, the little cursor pops up that says create transaction. And doing so takes us to this screen, which leads us into step two that I wanted to show you. Now, under the creation of our transaction, uh, all we have to do is give it a name so we can... Give it a name. Uh, you can put it, put in what type of transaction it is. We have commercial lease listing sale, condo lease listing sale, residential lease listing sale, and then residential financing. Select which one works for you. Uh, we also have import data. If you recall, I mentioned you could either go in and uh, if you want to do the neat way and uh, traditionally fill out all of this information pertaining to the listing that you would like to have a transaction for piecemeal. You just go in and type everything up. If you don't want to do that, maybe take a shortcut. We do have this import data. Now from here, I can just select Georgia MLS, select my property type. And if you type in the list number for that particular listing, the system will create a transaction based upon all of the information that you put in uh, for the uh, listing associated with that list number. Now there's one thing that I uh, left off there and that's gonna be template because that's the second part of this that I wanna show you guys. Now, not only can you create a transaction uh, as easily as simply uh, clicking on the list number within uh, Paragon, but you have the ability ahead of time to create transaction templates. Now what a template is, is this is let's say the skeleton uh, with which you're gonna create the transaction. Um, it goes back to that point that I mentioned earlier on where you do a little bit of work on the front end so you don't have to worry about it later on. Now in dealing with the creation of a transaction, template, sorry. <laughs> uh, I can go over here uh, if I click on this little uh, toolbar on the left hand side and select settings. Clicking on settings is going to take me over to the screen where you can go in and fine tune various aspects of the system. We'll drill down a little bit in more into that when we uh, uh, have the dedicated uh, uh, webinars based on transaction creation and whatnot. But I did want to point out right here, we've got a transaction template page. So not only can you type in the list number to create the t uh, your transaction, but by creating a template, this allows for you to go in if you are a broker, you can not only create this, but you can create it for the whole office as well. Keep that in mind. May help a, a lot of people out. Uh, you'll give it a name. You'll select your property type. So in this case, let's say we're dealing with a residential listing. You can give it a description if you want, but realize this is just for you. So it's taster's choice uh, if you need it or not. If I click save, it's going to take me to this template screen. Now from the transaction template screen, I have the ability to create one of those checklists that I mentioned before. If I want to do that, um, all I have to do is click on the plus symbol. Uh, likewise, if I want to add contacts to this particular template, I can select the contact button and then I can pull in all of the people that I normally associate with the tra with transactions when I do my business. Now, keep in mind, a lot of you are saying, well, how do I know who I'm sitting across from uh, at the table when I'm closing down, when I'm uh, closing a transaction? Uh, the uh, fact remains, if you don't know who that person's going to be, you do have the ability to create an empty contact. So you can create placeholders for all the participants that are usually involved in the closing of a transaction so that by the time you get to that point, you can just start throwing names into the appropriate slots and then you're good to go. 
All right. I'm not showing. Hold on one second. Uh, Chandra, you're not showing a transaction template line. Um, now, in order to have that available, you have to create a template first. So what I would recommend doing is if you can follow along or if you are following along, go to settings and then select uh, that transaction template screen there. Once you create the template, you should have the opportunity to add that template to any transactions that you create. And I think I said create too many times in that sentence, but we're moving on. Along with the contacts, we also have the ability to uh, add and pull in documents and folders. Now, to me personally, this is where you're going to find a lot of value and, and, and weight into uh, the creation of a transaction and more importantly, the creation of a transaction template. Because by clicking on the plus button here, I can either add a folder or a document. Now, if I um, uh, want to add a document, this goes back. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep mentioning you, Giselle, just because it was a great question to ask. If I have any office-specific documents, I can go ahead and simply pull that information in by clicking Add Document. I can either pull that document up uh, if I have it saved on my computer and just drag and drop it into this area here like I was in Dropbox, or if I would like to, I can upload that information directly from the computer. I can copy it from the doc box. I can import it from a third party. So if you're using Dropbox or uh, uh, Google Docs or something along those lines, a cloud-based service, you'll be able to pull that information in directly from there. Likewise, if you've got an email uh, with that information in it, you can upload it directly from the email. The whole idea being that if you have an office-specific document, you can pull it into this template. Taking that one step further, not only can you do that for documents, but right below that, we've got our forms. So not only can I pull in any office specific documents, but I can also go through and we've got, well, as I mentioned before, I, I don't have the ability to view those GAR forms, but if I uh, had those forms uh, available for me, they would show up right here and I could go ahead and pull in all of the uh, GAR forms that I need in order to complete that transaction. Now, the reason why there's value here is once I'm done with this transaction, if I go back to create, a, a, once I'm done with this template, if I go back to create a uh, transaction like we looked at a few minutes ago, notice that second area here is template. So not only can I fill out all the information, I can put in the Georgia MLS list number, but I can select the template that I just created so that when I click create, it's going to pull in all of the listing information from that listing that was housed in Paragon, but it's also going to pull in all of the forms that I would normally have to piecemeal add one by one into that transaction all at once. So that once I'm done, I've got all of my listing information in the transaction. I've got all the forms that I need to have associated with that transaction already pulled in. And it will auto-populate the information pertaining to uh, uh, fields pertaining to the listing information. So the address and all of that information will already be pulled in uh, to those forms when you go in for step three, which is the digital signature. Everybody with me so far? I know I've uh, I may be throwing a lot at you guys, but the good news is unlike last week's Paragon class, which was way too much stuff to throw at anybody in a short period of time, this uh, transaction desk, while it is open-ended and it does allow for a lot of flexibility to meet your needs, it is also uh, rather rigid and strict in that there are only a set number of things that you can do uh, and the system does them well. So like I mentioned, you can create that transaction. You can have that transaction created, uh, get most of the work done in the creation of that transaction by simply using the template. Uh, finally, we do have the uh, digital signature that I want to share you. But uh, these are finite things. And this system is also one of the most heavily supported systems that we have. So uh, we'll probably close out everything once I show you the digital signatures uh, by showing you all the various ways that you can get supplemental information uh, pertaining to various aspects of the system. Uh, there are videos, like I mentioned, we have videos on YouTube. We also teach a, uh, uh, we have a, a virtual CE class. Um, for those of you that made mention that you didn't see uh, any classes on the tech scheduler, if you go out to the tech scheduler now, you should see classes. We'll be covering um, transaction to Paragon, MLS tax suite, and building a CMA in, uh, in Paragon uh, uh, every month uh, going forward. So there are already some out there for, uh, for July uh, and August, and I believe we even have September out there. So uh, just so you know, I'm going to make sure that you guys are covered. All right. So just to reiterate, since I know we're already at uh, uh, 231, uh, we started out today by talking about transaction desk uh, or transactions by transaction or transaction desk condition. I'm not really sure about this new title, but in either case, this is going to be the system that you're going to use to help create your digital transactions. Uh, we've shown you all the information that you can pull into a transaction. And likewise, likewise underneath the settings section, 
uh, I've shown how you can create a transaction template to get you started on the creation of that transaction. Uh, the third thing that I did want to show today is going to be the digital signature section, uh, which is going to be located under our tab here that says signings. Uh, and this is going to be the authenticine portion of the system. Um, Excellent. Hello, Hattie. Welcome to the party. Um, now, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, you may start off by creating the transaction template. Then you're going to go through and you're going to create your transactions. Once your transaction's created and you're ready to get the ball rolling on, on, on getting uh, things signed, uh, you have the ability or the, and with flexibility uh, to do digital signatures pertaining to any of the transactions and forms that you have created. Now, in any case, as you can see, this screen is a lot like that transaction screen we were looking at before. Where we know we're dealing with signings. We can search through the signings here. We can filter, we can sort, we can create a new signing if we want. In each case, or in any case, as you go through the signings, you're always going to see icons that let you know where you are within the creation process. Uh, if you have this lightning bolt here, that means that, that uh, you have uh, created a signing and you've sent it out to your uh, signees to sign. Uh, if you've got a gear, that means that you, you're still working on it. So there's still stuff that you have to do before you send that information out to your uh, participants to sign it and bring it back. Once everything has been signed, all T's have been crossed and I's have been dotted, uh, you will get a nice little blue ribbon here letting you know that everything is uh, complete. Now, keep in mind, uh, you are not beholden to the screen. As you go through each step of the way for the signing, there will be email correspondence between you and uh, the participants who are going to sign the document. Uh, the, the, you'll know when they receive it. They'll know when you sent it. They sign it, and once they sign it, it'll come back to you. Now, there are a couple of logic things to cover when it comes to the signing because this is a fairly flexible system. Um, if you want, and if you're dealing with your participants, uh, you can do this for one individual or multiple individuals. Uh, depending on their comfort level with their digital signatures will depend on how you approach the signing. Now, let's say you have a situation where you've got three participants that need to sign a document, two of which are, are comfortable with digital signatures, one of which is not. What this system will allow for you to do is send the one who's not comfortable with the digital signature uh, 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 the, the document for them to, to sign with uh, wet ink. Once they've signed it, you can upload it back into the system and then you can create a digital signature uh, so that the people who are comfortable signing it digitally can, can go back behind it and sign it. Um, so there, there's lots of flexibility in how you're going to be able to work and deal with these. Uh, to create a signature, uh, all we have to do, much like we did for the transaction, is at the top right portion of the screen, click on the button that says uh, the plus sign that says add. You're going to give it a name. And then you're going to uh, optionally add it to a transaction. Uh, if you don't want to, or if you just want to pull up a form and sign it digitally, you can do so. But if you've already created a transaction, you've got several uh, uh, forms and documents that have been created that have been pulled in from uh, the MLS and they're auto-populated, and you want to get the ball rolling on those, you can simply scroll through, find the appropriate transaction, and it will only provide you with those documents that are associated with the transaction. Uh, Cheryl, that's a good question. Uh, AuthentiSign, DocuSign, DotLoop, uh, RDocs, there are four or five others that I'm not naming here. Uh, they are not the same company, but they do, uh, uh, they do the same thing, if that makes any sense. Like all of them are put in place uh, to uh, allow for you to send a document out to someone digitally and have them sign it and come back to you as a legally binding document. Uh, this is just uh, Transaction Desk's flavor of that digital signature component. All right. So uh, for today, we're just going to, um, like I said, I'm just going to show you how all this is set up because we're going to actually, uh, and we already have one out there I don't, now that I think about it on YouTube that covers how to do a digital signature. But just to point out, uh, if uh, once you've uh, selected or added that tr uh, transaction or associated with it, you're going to click save and it's going to take you over to the digital signature screen. Now, for those of you that may use another system, uh, there may be more steps involved, but for Transaction Desk, it's a simple four-step process. All right, step one is to define the details of the signing. This is where you're going to go in and you can add uh, reminders. You can set an expiration date for the signing. Uh, you have the, the ability to choose between a sign in line and a simul sign. Uh, easy explanation between the two is uh, simul sign means if, let's say, uh, Cheryl, Hattie, and Chandra, if I was going to have all three of you sign a document, if I do simul sign, then all of you are going to receive the document at the same time. You can all sign it at once, and when all three of you have signed it, I will have a completed document with three digital signatures on it.
Taking it one step further, uh, I can do a sign in line. And what that's going to allow for me to do is dictate the order with which people will receive those documents for the signing. As I was saying, uh, simul sign allows for everybody uh, it, to broadcast that signature out to everyone at once. Uh, sign in line lets you create a hierarchy or a chain with which they're going, uh, the order with which they're going to sign this. In a lot of instances, if you want to make sure certain people have eyes on the document last or first, uh, sign in line may be good for you. If you uh, really don't need that, you just need everybody to sign the document and get it back to you. Simul sign may be the way to go. Uh, once you've uh, set the parameters and the details of that uh, the signature, uh, you're going to add the participants. And all I did there was click on participants. And uh, as you can see, I can either add a new participant. I can add from the contacts. Another reason why it's good to set up that template. So if you've already got all your uh, participant or all the contacts associated with the transaction, you can just select who needs to sign it from that list. Or if you'd like to add yourself, you could do so. Along with adding the participants, you can also go through, uh, yes, I know I have to do that. Um, the step three is gonna allow for you to select the documents with which you wanna sign. You do have the ability to go through and uh, you can do the signing for just one document or you can group multiple documents together. Um, uh, in, in either case, uh, once you've figured out what they're gonna sign, uh, the final step is to design it. And now the designing of the digital signature just means that you're gonna go through and uh, much like you would if you were dealing with a sheet of paper where you would have the little post-it notes with the arrows that say sign here, initial here. That's all you're doing, but just in a digital format. Uh, once you've done that, so to reiterate, we're going to create the signing. We find out who's going to sign, what they're going to sign. Of course, you're going to do that. What they're going to sign and then how, where they're going to sign it. Uh, then you can send that out and your client will receive the information. Uh, they'll get full instructions on how to do the signature. Uh, it's very user friendly for the signer, for the signee to sign simply because by designing the layout of that signature, you put where they're all going to sign and all they literally are doing are clicking where you tell them to click. It's a very straightforward and easy process. And like I mentioned before, once you are done, with the signing, uh, it'll show up under this grid here, so you'll know when they sign it or where you are within the process of getting those completed. All right, so uh, with that being said, just to reiterate again, Transaction Desk is going to be our digital transaction platform. Within it, you are gonna be able to create uh, templates that are gonna allow for you to get started and quickly create transactions based upon listings that you either find or you, create, uh, or you pull in from Paragon. Once you've created those transactions, uh, you can pull in forms and you can pull in office specific documents. And along with that, you can create digital signatures based upon those documents associated with that transaction, uh, all underneath the signing section, uh, which is located right here uh, underneath that transaction desk uh, heading on the left hand side of the screen. Now, I'm sure all of you are saying, Greg, this was fantastic. I wish there was a way for me to send you uh, uh, tributes and money. Guys, I really, I appreciate it, but uh, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Save your money. I kid. You probably want to know uh, where to find supplemental information so you can get started on this, uh, just because maybe something I said piqued your interest. Um, as we go through here, uh, everywhere in the system, you'll notice uh, they're, they're, they try to hide various ways for you to get help. I already mentioned before, even if you go off of the, the homepage here, uh, we've got that little camera. Uh, or that little television screen that's got a question mark that'll walk you through help videos. Uh, if we look at our dashboard here out on the left-hand side, there is a help button. If I click on that help button, it's gonna take us over to the uh, transaction desk help screen. It is worth noting there is a 1-800 number uh, that you can call. Uh, they have their lone wolf support that is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, it is true. One thing I will let you guys know, uh, as a general rule of thumb, uh, especially if you're tuning into a webinar Wednesday, I'm not going to uh, blow smoke, guys. I'm going to tell you the truth, uh, straight up, good or bad. And the fact remains, there are going to be a lot of in, uh, times when you may call uh, lone wolf uh, to get information or get things answered for you, and they may not answer your question. In the event that they can't help you or the answer that you you get from them is that you need to contact Georgia MLS. As I mentioned towards the beginning of the class, my email address is greg at gamls.com. 
If you run into a situation like that, don't hesitate to drop me a line. Uh, a lot of times if they uh, uh, push you off over to the MLS, all it takes is a phone call from me or a couple conversations just to make sure that we get your problem fixed. But at the end of the day, what matters is whether you contact Transaction Desk or you email me, we will get your situation straightened out. OK, uh, along with being able to call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can also contact them by email. They also have the ability for you to live chat with someone. Uh, as I was saying, along with being able to email or call, uh, there is also a live chat that you can go ahead and do. All right. So um, for the support, like I mentioned, there is live support so you can chat with someone if you would like to. There will be a live person there if you don't want to email or call them. Uh, we have also online training. Uh, that will allow for you to go in and schedule a webinar. We've got online training, in-person training. Uh, there are training packages that they have. Uh, you can send them feedback if you want. They have guides. Uh, these are going to be um, text-based documents that will walk you through every aspect of the system. So as you can see here, uh, they literally have, even just for the dashboard, they've got six documents that will walk you through the dashboard. If there is a button to push, you will be able to find that button uh, or have that button explained to you uh, through that uh, support dashboard there. There are also help videos. So if you don't really, if reading's not your thing and you'd rather watch a video, they have video forms or versions of everything that we cover today. So uh, like I said, there are 22 videos showing you how to use the various widgets on the dashboard. Uh, it, it's very in-depth. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in AuthentiSign, uh, there's uh, 26 videos that'll walk you how to do a digital signature right now. Um, documents and videos right here that are going to show you how to uh, go through and deal with the email. Give me one second. Let me go through all of this. And then once I'm done, uh, we can, ah, perfect. Um, uh, and then uh, we can we can uh, cover that a little more. Um, and I do apologize. Uh, I, I always try and keep these under 30 minutes and somehow time always gets away from me. But along with the help videos, there is also a Vimeo page that will walk you through Transaction Desk and uh, cover all of the things that we cover today and so much more. So again, if you're interested in learning more about or something I said today uh, uh, piqued your interest, uh, before we uh, make it to the webinars, we're gonna drill down and, uh, and go over every single aspect of what I covered today. Just wanted to let you know, you have multiple ways, whether it's via chat, reading documents, uh, watching videos, watching old webinars, or even scheduling a new webinar to, to, to view with people, or even going over to our YouTube page where we actually have, let me scroll down, uh, a playlist where uh, we cover all the things that uh, we were talking about. So we've already got one that shows you um, how to create a digital signature, creating a transaction template, uh, we've got creating a transaction, and we've got another version of introduction to transaction desk there. Although I will say that one's only 28 minutes and 54 seconds, so I'm guessing today was a little more in depth. Um, ah, with that being said, um, yeah, I know I threw a lot at you guys, but uh, I hope I kind of made up for that towards the end by showing you all the various ways uh, that you can get supplemental information pertaining to the creation of uh, various uh, um, uh, transactions and digital signatures within Transaction Desk. Uh, real quick, let me see. Um, I don't have my email address. This isn't. This is actually the recording studio's uh, computer, so I don't have anything set up for me here, uh, uh, Marcella. But again. Uh, my email address is greg at gamls.com. If you just send me a quick email, once this is done, I can uh, write up exactly how to uh, answer whatever question you have and, and send that off to you uh, post haste. Uh, so with that being said, guys, I am really sorry that I uh, kept you here for as long as we did. Uh, but I hope this was uh, informative uh, and, 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 and good information for you. Like I said, uh, we have... Uh, uh, the wonderful Maggie Rice came through and, and made that little, uh, ah, there we go, uh, made our little flyer that's going to show all the upcoming uh, webinars that we have going. So today, as you can see, we did Transaction Desk. Uh, we're going to move on to that CRS tax suite next week where we're going to be covering how to do the prospecting. Uh, then we're going to tiptoe through uh, Paragon. Once we're done with Paragon, we're going to be right back at Transaction Desk covering how to do a template, covering how to do a digital signature, and doing a full-fledged webinar just showing you guys the three various ways that you can go in and create a transaction. Uh, so with that being said, I uh, do... do 
Ah, fantastic, Felicia. That means the world to me. That's exactly what I'm, I, I, I hope to accomplish whenever we have these here. So uh, as I always say about this time, guys, uh, go forth, sell a couple million dollars worth of homes, and don't forget to uh, have a great time this, uh, this, this uh, July 4th weekend, and stay safe, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in today. I hope this was helpful. Uh, have a great one. Thanks.